Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be taking you through a poem by one Edgar Allan Poe. So for those who know him, Edgar Allan Poe is majorly known and credited for the short story writing. He is one of the forces together with Anton Chekhov in Europe who came up with the idea of short story. But there is one of his eerie poems, and that is The Raven, uh, that was published in the year 1845. Edgar Allan Poe himself lived within between 1809 to 1849, and he is an American poet. So uh, stay with us as we try to unravel some of the allusions that are present in this poem. But before that, allow me to thank uh, those who have subscribed to my channel. Uh, those who are new here, kindly consider hitting on that subscribe button. Again, I also have to thank those who continue to support this uh, channel in, on a monetary basis. Sometimes it's not easy to produce these videos, but because of your monetary support, the channel has always uh, continued with this good job. Again, if you want to support, don't hesitate. There are various ways that you can support. You can be a member, and as you support the channel, you will also be receiving exclusive packs on your end. Again, there is that thanks button, so you can always uh, hit onto that uh, button and contribute any amount that you may want to to this channel. So the poem is quite long, about uh, nine, 18 stanzas, and that's why I've not written the whole of it here, but I'll make it available at the description part. So we'll be looking at the glaring allusions in this poem. An allusion is just a liter uh, literary technique in which writers make references either overtly or covertly to other works of literature. Like for instance, most writers today make reference to Shakespeare And that is why it's true that some of the Shakespearean characters have found their way into even English as a language. Like, for instance, a Shylock. The Bible can also be alluded to in the various works of art. And maybe history or generally religion so whenever excerpts from these literary materials find their way into a work of literature we conclude that there is allusion shortly let me just take us through the plot summary of the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. In this poem, the persona is disillusioned or hopeless. And that is why in a line uh, the persona believes that the raven to whom he is speaking will fly away just the same way his hopes have flown. Again, in this poem, the persona feels the isolating effects. Of grief 
he has lost a loved one called Eleanor. And from the descriptions, Lenor must have been very beautiful. It took the angels to name the Persona's maiden as Lenor. In the first stanza, he tries to read, maybe to move away from the thought of Lenore, but he only grows weak and uh, dreary. In the following stanzas, he hears a voice tapping on his chambered door. When he goes out, when he finally opens the door, there is no one by the door. The only sound that there is is the word Leno, and this word he has whispered. And that also talk about the traumatic effects of grief. He will not forget Leno, and that is why he goes out there then whispers the word Leno, and that word is echoed back to him. Then, a very important a part of the poem now comes to the fore, and that is a raven comes, kind of a bird, and you will remember that a raven, at some point in the history of the world, they were the social media, they were the, the mails that were used to deliver messages. And this ribbon comes and parts, patches at the bust of powers. And this allusion is derived from Greek mythology. So Pallas was a Greek goddess for wisdom. And it is quite interesting that the ribbon patches on top of that bust. Uh, probably the ribbon here embodies wisdom and symbolizes an inner intelligence or knowledge here. Then, in that stanza seven, we, the first line reads, in their stead, a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. So, the raven has been described as stately. Of the saintly days of yore. So something stately, something majestic. So the raven is majestic and is of the holy days of yore. So days of yore simply means days of long ago. And what this brings to our mind is the raven that fed Elijah from the Bible. So here there is the biblical allusion and that is the relationship that existed between Elijah and the raven who the Lord sent to take food for Elijah. And uh, could be the persona in this poem, the raven, 
also expect some divine message, especially on the, his maiden who has just died, that is Lenore. And that could be that comparison between the raven that took the meat to Elijah and this raven here. Again, in uh, stanza 8, that ebony bird seems to be beguiling the persona's sad fancy into smiling. Probably he expects some message from of the supernatural world. And then he asks the Reverend question uh, about who the Reverend could be, who, who the, the name uh, could be. So in the final line, it says, tell me what thy lordly name is on the knight's plutonium shore. So the knight's plutonium shore That is also derived from the Roman mythology. The Romans refer to the underworld as the Knights Plutonian Shaw. They believe that all those who die, including Lenore, who is the persona's maiden, have all gone to the night's Plutonian shore. And there, the god of death, Pluto, reigns. But the answer that the raven gives and subsequently gives to the various questions that the persona will have is nevermore. So another allusion that we will come across here is found on stanza 14. And in this stanza, it begins, Then me thought the air grew denser, Perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tarted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels, he hath sent thee. Respite, respite and nepent from thy memories of Lenore. So the persona wonders if the angels or whatever forces that sent the raven to him have brought him respite. And respite is quite a kind of a reprieve. Probably a reprieve to his sorrow, to cure his sorrow. So, on the last line of that stanza 14, it says, Quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. So, nepenthe also traces its way from Greek mythology. And it is a kind of a narcotic, and this narcotic, the Greeks believed that it is used to chase away sorrows. So the persona asks if 
the coming of this raven is accompanied by uh, some kind of respite, some kind of nepeth that will chase away his sorrow of always thinking about uh, Lenore. So those are the major allusions that are present in the story. And uh, we can see that most of them are from Greek mythology. And that also tells us something about Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is always a lover of Greek mythology. He is also a lover of the Bible. So in some of his works, like the cask of Amontillado, is some of his short stories like Maccabu, we are going to find his biblical allusions as well as mythological allusions. So that is a, a, a discussion of the major allusions that are found in Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Until next time on Poetry, thank you for watching.